RealAgriculture.com Canola School is brought to you by Syngenta Crop Protection Canada. Jonathan, let's talk about the uh, about the canola market. Uh, this week we had a canola stock report that came out. Uh, from what I've been reading, there were some surprises in it. Why were people surprised? Well, Sean, uh, the report that we had out with, from StatsCan here this week is is their estimate of the stocks that were in Western Canada here, or in Canada in general, as of July 31st. So basically, it's it's a it's a report that that gives their estimate of what the crop year end stocks are. And the number that came out with canola uh, was over 2.1 million tons, which is probably at least a half million tons than most in the trade we're looking for, and perhaps even even more. So. So basically, their their indication is that stocks were were quite a bit higher than anyone was expecting, as of as of July 31st. So in reality, what does that what does that mean for prices? Well, ordinarily it would be it'd be typically viewed as quite bearish. I mean, essentially they're they're saying that there's a whole lot more old crop stocks out there around in the system than than people had been expecting. Um, but you know, I, I think when you peel the numbers back a little bit more and dig a little bit deeper, it's it's. I, I think as much as anything, probably left some some confusion in the trade. Uh, you know, the market did pull back a little bit yesterday and and today here a little bit as we speak, uh, not dramatically so. Uh, still kind of within the same trading range we've held since uh, since late August, but uh, but construed as as a bit bearish, but. Uh, you know, I, I think one of the things that that uh, people are kind of looking at and really scratching their heads is is basically um, what StatsCan did to try and make their their numbers balance is they put a huge negative figure in the uh, feed seed and waste and dockage uh, line. And so basically, uh, just to back it up half a step, StatsCan didn't make any adjustments in this report to what their production figure was for last year. Uh, but we more or less know what demand was in exports. We more or less know what demand was on the crush side. And so if they sit there and they look at what those stocks are at the end of the year, this, you know, the numbers just don't add up. And so basically uh, what they've done is they put a huge negative figure sort of in the residual part of it to, to make the numbers balance. Well, obviously so can't are, have they, a negative. are they basically guessing? Well, it, it's, it's one of those, uh, and, and they indicated themselves that they're going to have to go back and increase – uh, what last year's production estimate was. And so somewhere along the line, either through higher yield, maybe through a higher percentage of acres harvested, uh, somewhere along the line they're going to just have to simply increase what last year's production was because you, you just simply can't have a negative <laughs> demand number. And we know that there's a certain amount of, 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 of waste, of dockage in the system of seed and so forth. And so somewhere along the line they have to increase the the, the, the production number in some way, shape, or form fairly substantially. But, uh, you know, another part of it that, that has us scratching our heads here a little bit or, or just sort of uh, questioning uh, to a certain extent what their number was is, is for example, their, their on-farm stocks number. So not stocks that are in the commercial system, but actually sitting in farmer's bins. As of the end of July, they had at, at uh, over a million tons, which, which we think is probably on the high side. Uh, we know that there are some some growers in Western Canada that maybe hung on a more old crop canola than they ordinarily would have because there was a lot of question as to what their crop would be like this year, whether it got in the ground or not. Um, there are always are producers that carry over uh, uh, canola from the previous year, but it just seems in our minds, you know, that equates to uh, really almost almost 10% of last year's crop, and, and we just question whether there was that much canola sitting in farmers' bins on average across all of Western Canada, particularly given that we had a pretty good price run up in the month and a half leading up to the end of July. So uh, in, in, in some ways this report almost leaves more, maybe more questions than answers in terms of what the actual canola supply was going into this year's harvest. Well, and to, probably to confuse the situation even more is how is the market interpreting uh, what the supply volumes are going to be from the 2010 crop based on the crop conditions across the West? Well, that, that's right. You know, I mean, and, and so you know, not only do we have some uh, some question as as to uh, uh, this year's or the, this most recent stocks report, which uh, which which people are, are sort of grappling with uh, how exactly to, to interpret it, and and which numbers are accurate, which numbers need adjusting. You know, there was some question in the last stats can report as to as to the acreage figure and whether people are are you know, fully taking that at face value or not. And then, of course, there's obviously all. It's been tough going through a good chunk of the prairies. Uh, yield reports somewhat variable, and and so you know at the end of the day, there's there just still is is a, a lot of uncertainty as what our canola supply is going to look like 
once we finally tough it out and make our way through harvest here. Uh, still just a lot of questions on the supply side. So I guess, you know, should I be bullish or bearish canola? Well, I... You know that's that's a good that's a good question. If we if we get a good stretch of weather here, and if 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 we assume that we can at some point here get most of this canola crop off in in reasonable shape, which is maybe a bit of a big assumption at this stage of the game, but if we assume we can get most of this crop off in reasonable shape, uh, not really knowing for sure what those yields will be like, um, I, I guess I would interpret it as saying you know we're. Probably in the interim here, we might come under a little bit of pressure if we can get some harvest progress going, because a certain amount of canola will, will of course, get delivered in the system here. And there are some areas that are, you know, expecting a fantastic canola crop. So we could see a little bit of harvest pressure here going forward. But I, I think to a certain extent, um, you know, we aren't necessarily bearish the canola market particularly because there's, I think, two factors that, that help us out. First of all is, uh, you know, demand is, is continues to underpin this market. Uh, even though even if supplies end up being bigger, you know, uh, even if supplies end up being bigger than maybe what traders thought a couple months ago, whether it's bigger old crop stocks carried into the current crop year, more acres, and maybe a bigger yield than people were forecasting initially, uh, there's tremendous demand under this market. And uh, at a certain point, it's, it's, it'll get absorbed, whether it's through domestic crush with all the new capacity that's come online, uh, export demand through the likes of China and other, other, other destinations. So uh, it, it makes us... Uh, not necessarily that bearish, even if we have a bit of a larger supply, just because we know that those those stocks will get absorbed absorbed somewhere. So uh, perhaps a little interim harvest pressure, quite possible, um, but longer term, not necessarily that bearish, particularly if growers can afford to be a little bit patient. And then the other side of the equation as well, uh, uh, getting beyond just canola specifically, is is you know there's generally been quite a bit of support in wheat, the corn market. That provides a certain amount of spillover support as well, and as long as those markets are, are fairly friendly, uh, and we'll know more maybe after tomorrow morning's USDA report in terms of, of uh, how those complexes are looking, uh, that's that's also been providing some some support as well. So, so if there, uh, if there is you know if there is going to be with the increase in domestic crushing capacity, and so say we are going to have some demand out there, and and say we do have a reasonable harvest that comes off, because you're right, there is some areas that uh, are going to have some good crops. How do we see the crusher? What, what do we? How do we see basis levels playing out? Well, I, I think what we could probably see here is maybe a little bit of pressure on basis levels over the next uh, over the next little window here. If we do continue, if we are able to get some some harvest progress going, you know, I, I think there's been a reasonable amount of farmers selling over time here into this window as prices have perked up, and so. Uh, even though demand has been pretty good, I, I think we'll probably maybe see some pressure on basis levels in the interim. And we've already started to see a certain amount of that as, as basis levels have generally, not everywhere, but in a lot of places have backed off in the country a little bit, maybe as, 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 uh, as the different companies have had their interim needs covered. But I, I think longer term, over the course of the year, we, we think that basis should, levels should stay relatively firm here. I, I, I think at a certain point... Uh, um, you know, it's going to take maybe some effort on the market to coax some of this canola out of farmers' bins once once guys have shipped what they need to ship here in fall. And uh, a certain amount of that could be done to the futures market. And if it's not the futures market trading higher, maybe it'll have to be basis that does some of the work. So uh, I, we should see basis levels firm up here, we'll maybe aside from a little widening out here as, as we keep pounding through harvest. If if the weather holds up and if we can actually uh, actually get this crop off in reasonable shape, which we know, of course, is, is still a bit of a question mark. Right. So, John, as we as we kind of evaluate where we're at with the canola uh, crop here, does canola still look like the potential uh, profitability profitability winner that it looked like at seeding time? Well, I think guys that are able to get uh, get a reasonable yield and a reasonable crop off should still do fairly well with the canola. You know, from a price perspective here, you know, we're we're not that far off of uh, off of the highs here. We're only off about ten bucks a ton from where the sort of the most recent highs are, and uh, and and we're uh, I would say modestly friendly here going forward. Uh, for, for canola, generally speaking. So, you know, that's a pretty good price if guys are able to get a reasonable yield, which realize, of course, is, is going to be quite variable across the prairies. But for growers that are able to get a reasonable yield, I mean, prices are pretty good, and, and so they should do fairly well with this year's canola crop. Okay, final question, John. If mm -hmm. uh, I've, uh, For my 2010 crop, uh, where would you say most farmers are in terms of uh, percent sold? <laughs> 
I think on average, I, I think it's just all over the map, uh, partially because uh, I think a lot of guys have been reluctant to, to sell too aggressively, even if they would have wanted to, based on the uncertainty of their crop. You know, there's a lot of crop out there that looks good, but it's still very late. Uh, a lot of crop that was just questionable as we've gone along here, based on it getting off to a tough start. So I, I think it's highly, I, I think it's really variable in terms of where producers are on average in terms of their sales. I, I think there's some some producers out there that have sold fairly aggressively and it's some fairly good pricing and in their individual situation that might have, might make a lot of sense. Other guys have held back a bit more cautious and certainly that's understandable as well given the uncertainty of, of, uh, of what their production has, has been like. So I, I think on average it's, it's, it's really it's really been quite variable this year. Do you think um, though that are we below, if, if we compare this time to prior years, are we below where we usually are? You know, I don't know. I, I would say on average, we maybe aren't that different than what we typically would have been, but just perhaps maybe a little more, a little more variable. I, I think there's been a certain amount of fairly aggressive selling into some, some reasonably attractive pricing. Uh, so you might have, have certain producers that are maybe more aggressively sold than they ordinarily would have been as, as some of these opportunities have come up, both with fairly good basis levels and, of course, a, a pretty good futures price. Uh, so maybe that's offset. Uh, those growers that have maybe been a little more cautious just because they just they just weren't sure what they were going to get. So I, I'm not sure that I would say that we're necessarily that far behind on average where we would have been. Um, uh, that might start to change and maybe we do some catching up. Maybe guys are even more aggressively sold here going forward if we're able to make some reasonable harvest progress and if, if prices manage to hold up reasonably well. You know, you might see guys end up maybe on average being a little more aggressive than we have been in the past. But uh, yeah. I think there's. I, I think uh, given the combination of the weather, given some of the uncertainty of, of the most recent few stat can reports, I, I think there's still as much uncertainty out there, certainly on the supply side, uh, as we've had in a long time. Okay, John. Thanks a lot for joining us. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, John.